We're joined today by Western hurdler Kobe Okazi. Kobe, uh, home meet this weekend. We want to touch base and talk to you. You're one of our four hurdlers in a group that's been pretty awesome. Uh, a part of a group that's got a pretty legendary history. We're going to get into that a little bit. But first, tell us how it's going. You guys are training for the WW Invitational this weekend. First of two home meets plus the GNAC combined events at Civic Stadium this year. You guys excited to be competing in Bellingham? It's it's exciting to say the least. I mean, after the seasons we all had last or for indoor season, it's it's really cool to actually stretch our legs out, kind of figuratively and like literally with you know shorter event distances and indoor season. For outdoor season, it's it's always such a blast because the weather gets better. You can you can feel just people are like more more ready. They're more excited. So like it's I I'm ready to go and like I'm ready to to give some people a show for the home meet. And I know everybody else is too. Look out in Bellingham right now, the sun's shining, the cherry blossoms are out on campus, we're turning the calendar into April, which means track and field faster times. Oh yeah. Busy schedule, you guys are going to have some stuff in California, GNAC championships are in May. Mm -hmm. This is prime time for you guys. Talk about the, the build up to April and May and, and how important these meets are to get your times in and also to hone in on your training. So I, it, outdoor is always such a thing for me because like I, I was a big football guy growing up and so I always imagined like indoor season was like it was preseason you know like it was still important to hone in those specifics but that that wasn't really where you made your money that's not the bread and butter getting ready like coming straight off the out or the indoor season and you're you're feeling good off of GNAC championships and you get those first couple meets in before like the start of spring really starts it, it just it sets the tone. If you can, if you feel comfortable and confident in those those first couple meets, then you really set yourself up to just hit the ground running when you start getting to these home meets, and then you start getting ready for the GNAC championships that come out. And like I know that my guys, especially like Kale and I, came into the same class together, and we had, we got to learn from such great people like Cordell and Reed. Um, they they always emphasize the importance of these early meets on for us and having them kind of be on there to where um, Cordell was still here for our third year, like having him and then having the new group of hurdlers, Jaden and Hunter come in, we kind of had this interesting melded sense of freshness and wisdom and like kind of people still getting the hang of it and learning to be leaders and it all is just kind of culminated in this really great atmosphere where we all know what we're doing and we all know what our goals are and spring only ever just exacerbates that and makes it so much more prominent. You touched on this just a little bit, but the legacy of this group, whether it be Travis Milbrand kind of passing the baton on to Cordell and then Cordell on to you and Kale and Jaden and Hunter, uh, you guys have kind of littered the record books. Um, but this goes way back. This goes back to the 1970s when Mike Vorce was just yeah. a force. Yeah. Um, and he still holds that record in, 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 in the 400. Um, some in the past they've called Western track and field javelin you mm -hmm. I know there's been a legacy of pole vault with Ryan Brown amazing distance runners up and down the record book the hurdlers though I mean this is a strong strong group um, over the last 10 years but also in the history how much pride goes into that group and uh, I know uh, I know coach Dudley is also a big <laughs> part of that because he's a hurdler himself oh, yeah I for me it's it I mean it's everything for this like for me like I I've gone to every GNAC championship and I've, we've never lost one since I've been here. And I remember Cordell telling me before that, he's like, when you, get, when you got here and when Kale got here, we, we knew that this class was going to help make sure that we won the championship that year. Because I think they got second the year before and Cordell told me, I'm tired of losing. We're winning this. And since then, there's just been this energy that you don't get to lose. When it's time to show up, you show up because you put in the work with each other and you know how much it means to everybody. And it just, like, I, I have nothing but pride for, for the Viking that I have on my chest and the, the W that I get to wear on, on meet day. So, I mean, and I, I told the same thing to Jaden and Hunter when they got here. I was like, I haven't lost a, a GNAC meet yet, and I don't intend on losing while I'm here. And so far, they've helped us do just that. And I know they feel the same sense of pride and joy of being able to continue that legacy. Because, I mean, you have Kale, who specializes more in the 400 meters and is always so consistent and always so hardworking. And then you have Hunter, who's way more of a, a 110 specialist, and he, you can see, like, just the, the desire, and you can see the mental math and the, the work ethic that he's turning. You just see those gears going, 
and then you have Jaden and I who do both of them, and you just have this great breadth of talent and camaraderie and the ability to push each other in certain aspects that maybe one day we're falling off on, but we, we see the same things, we know the same things, we know each other. It, it just, again, creates, like you were saying, just a sense of pride in your community and that what you're doing is for the guy next to you or the girl next to you and that everything is going to culminate together, whether it's a first place championship or it's just barely missing that second one. But we, we all know that we're going for that first place and that that's what we're going to get. When we get a chance to talk to our student athletes like this, it's, it's pretty special because you find things out that you don't know, majors, interests, backgrounds. Um, tell us a little bit about your future ambitions. It's a little bit different than some people, but there's a lot of pride in it. Yeah. Um, you're a fourth year, but you're going to be moving on. And something that's pretty special. Uh, tell us about what's your next step. So it's, 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 it definitely is just a next step and a long step of things that I want to do. Because I'll start out by saying, like, so I'm a poli-sci major, and um, I've, I've, politics have always been super important to me. I've always felt that it's, it's my path to helping the most amount of people that I can. Because when... Something I've learned, and especially in these last four years, is that whether it's cosmically ordained or it's something just intrinsic to my own personal values, that my, my service to this earth is to help people and to be a part of their lives and make sure that they have the best that they can get. And so one day I'm hoping that I can be president and get to the White House and serve my country and the world community at large um, as best as I can, but in the meantime, I, I actually am hoping to uh, gain a special forces contract in the military under the 18 X-ray program. I'm currently working on getting the delayed entry uh, for that, so they kind of set it up to where after you finish college, you can go sign your sign on the dotted line, go to MEPS, which is the the processing, and go through all that. And uh, within special forces, I, I really hope to be a medic. I didn't realize until just this year even how much medicine has touched my life. Being a being an athlete with multiple injuries and illnesses that I've suffered, uh, being with my grandparents all through their lives, and my mom was a nurse for 14 years, and my dad retired with his full 20 years as a medic, and he was in Desert Storm and Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom, and so medicine has always been so important to me, but without even realizing it, and I realized that if I do serve, I want to make sure that I'm helping people come home, and it's not just going out there and doing whatever I'm being told. It's making sure that I'm making a difference to the families that are back home, to the people that are on the front lines, and then even to the, the people that whose land I'm in. You know, like, I don't, I don't want to just be this force. I want to be something that people see a red cross on and they go, he can help me. He's going to help me. And I, I just feel like that's where my next step is. And in order for me to get to my end goal and to really understand the world I live in and myself even a little bit more, I think that that part of my journey is really important and it's something i got to do now. So, well, Pretty cool to hear from you, Kobe, and uh, we're also really excited to see you compete um, this weekend at uh, WWE Invitational on Saturday, basically 11.30 to 3.30, you will be running some hurdles, oh, yeah. and then uh, we have the Vernacki at the end of the month in April, and then we get to follow you on the journey of the postseason, the GNAX, and, uh, and okay. hopefully maybe even see a championship. So good luck on Saturday. Appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the season. Uh, go hurdle you. Oh yeah, hurdle you. Let's get the, let's get that trending. You know, I gr I grew up in the the, the jab you thing, watching all our javelin throwers do it. But you know, it, it's time for a new nickname to go through here because we even have even our multis are really good at hurdles, and it, it's I I think hurdle you fits us for right now. Too. Oh, I think we always end with an interview with the go bikes. Go bikes.